Welcome, you bunch of hooligans. <laughs> uh, hope some of you were on the uh, live stream last night on Bodine's channel. Uh, we had so much fun. They do short ones. They only do like an hour, hour and 15, but man, we had a blast. So check that out. I think you can find it on Bodine52 is his channel. Um, got a couple things today. Um, I'm truly annoyed at Harley Davidson at the moment, as most of us are in general, but but very specific reason. Uh, and I thought of a great story to share with you guys. So uh, stick around. So why am I annoyed at Harley at the moment? Well, it's it's a uh, it's a very specific reason, and that's that damn clutch cable situation. Uh, my Ultra Limited is still sitting on a lift at Alligator Alley Harley Davidson. It is not Alligator Alley's fault. Um, uh, they're, they've always been good to me and they've been taking care of it. The issue is that when I put on that pipe and the the clutch, okay, first off, the clutch cable on these new bikes is not what you're picturing with just the metal adjuster in the middle that you loosen the lock nut and spread it out to take slack out and stuff. These new clutch cables are two separate pieces. There's a cable from the transmission that goes up, evidently on the right down tube now, not the left. Um, and there it goes into this adjuster piece, piece of hardware shebang, I don't know. And then there's another section that goes from the lever down to that. And somehow those cables meet in the middle and it, it you know, but it's two different pieces and there's magic and sorcery that happens. Uh, I have adjusted it on my wife's old 18 Heritage though, and it's pretty easy. You just click it and it pulls the slack out. So it seems to be pretty, pretty cool. But anyway, that central connector piece is damaged from the heat on the SNS pipe. Not SNS's fault, my fault. But even they said, hell, we would have done it too because we didn't know it was there either. <laughs> so the hang up is Harley Davidson didn't think to make, you know, parts for the motorcycles. They just like, Here's all the new bikes. Don't hurt the clutch cable because we ain't got none. So they're waiting on that to come in before they can put it back together. They, you know, my dude was hoping he would have it done on Friday this last weekend and he was like, it ain't here, but it should be here real quick. So I'm hoping maybe by this weekend, I'll get the ultra back. And the reason it's so frustrating is I have got so much cool stuff to do to that bike, just like building up, right? Some things that I've bought, some things that have been provided. Uh, again, there's never any money changing hands in this channel. So when I do an install of a thing, I, I, you know, I'm not being paid to say this stuff. They may have given me the thing and I'll always tell you that. But um, I have the new TP Amazon light bar for the tour pack. We'll see if that's any good. I'm sure it'll be all right. But that's sitting there waiting and has been for a month. I have got the Trask vented transmission cover that's now on back order. I've got one sitting right there that I, I bought from Trask to put on the Ultra Limited. I have got, I'm looking over here because there's a, st a stack of parts. I have got the quick release hardware to turn the tour pack into quick release. I have all the lighting from Custom Dynamics, the blade lights for the turns uh, for the uh, saddlebags that are amber. I've got a new downward showing or forced light thing, uh, a tail light from Custom, Dyna Custom Dynamics. I've got the curved license plate frame. I've got everything I need and the new mount that makes the, the plate under the taillight instead of above it like a flat. I got all that stuff sitting right there waiting to go on that bike and I'll do separate videos on those because otherwise it'd be like three hours long. Um, oh, and this was interesting. I had a company reach out to me saying we want to do headlights for your Ultra, uh, a company on Amazon. And I was like, no, you know, I appreciate it. But you know, I, I uh, um, when I upgrade those headlights, the, the ones that came on it, they're LED. They're not the best Harley, the LED lights you include. Um, but I'll, you know, I'll probably do something with, with Custom Dynamics you know, later on. And they said, no, 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 those are great and fine. We're not trying to compete with Custom Dynamics. What we want to do is we want to send you some really good lower cost options compared to stock. And I'm like, no, 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 no. And they were like, trust us, you, your, your viewers are going to like these things. So they're not, again, there's no money changing hands. All they did is they sent me a black halo headlight and the black passing lamps. That'll still be in chrome housings with chrome, you know, rings. <laughs> no, uh, chrome rings. So uh, I'm like, okay, fine. They bullied me into doing it. So those lights are sitting there. We're gonna put those on and see, you know, can 125 bucks get you a decent upgrade to your headlights? Um, and they admit it, it's not gonna be that sort of high end stuff, but it's better than stock and a really good deal. So those are sitting there waiting to go on there. Um, yeah. 
<laughs> so that's that frustration. And the other thing is, um, I was watching James May. I don't know if you guys watch Top Gear out there. James May is this like, like scruffy older British dude who loves cars and does a, a show, a couple shows on Amazon and stuff. One of them called Our Man in Japan. And he was in Japan. He's in Japan for several episodes, just showing sort of the different customs. And I, I've been to Japan several times for work. And I love Japan. My need for organization, I know you wouldn't be able to tell from this, but my need for order and people to follow the rules is just fed by the, the culture and the, and the sort of environment in Japan, right? They're organized, things are together. If a train's supposed to be there at 212, it is there at 212, you know, like, I, 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 I like Japan. Um, but there was a story. <laughs> I was there, this is not my most recent trip, but a couple trips ago, I was there with a whole bunch of people from all over the world for this conference thing. And um, we were supposed to go on a dinner cruise, which is a dramatic way of saying eat dinner on a boat as it went down a river. And it was like oversold or something. And so at the very last minute, uh, one of my friends through work from Europe was like, didn't have a seat and he was trying to work some business with someone else who was on this, this, this cruise thing. And I had a seat, but he was oversold. And I was like, you know what, take my spot. You know, you, you have, there's, there's too much good potential, you know, new work for this guy. I'd take money out of his pocket if he wasn't able to be on the cruise. I'm like, take my spot, it's fine. So he went and that left me and two other dudes um, with nothing to do on a Saturday night in Tokyo. One of them was a lawyer from Amsterdam. And the other was a lawyer from, I believe, Finland. I'm not a lawyer, but they, these guys were. And we just kind of swim in the same circles kind of thing for work. And so one of the guy from Amsterdam had been to Tokyo a bunch, knew how to navigate their incredibly complicated subway system with the, I don't know if you've ever seen the images of the spaghetti of, of tubes and paths and stuff. And he's like, let's go, um, let's go uh, 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 just find some trouble to get into. And so we did. We went into some area of Tokyo. I can't remember the name. I was staying in Nihonbashi, I think was the name of it. Boy, that's not where we were. We, we ended up just going sake drinking. Just pow, 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 bar after bar after bar. To the point to where at the end of the night, well, <laughs> what the end of the night? What should have been the end of the night, we were like shoulder to shoulder. You know that thing where you're just kind of keeping each other up, you know, going on the street? Because you don't want to appear drunk in public to a Japanese police officer, otherwise, they're gonna make you home, go home. <laughs> and we didn't wanna do that. So we're walking down this really busy area, surrounded by skyscrapers. And all of a sudden we see, in the midst of these like shopping, you know, like a red door, fire engine red door. And it was really out of place. And the guy from Amsterdam's like, I really wanna know what's behind that red door. And I was like, it's, dude, it's not, it's not a brothel. <laughs> Don't get too excited. We're in the middle of downtown Tokyo. Don't get overly excited. That's not what you think it is. He's like, I, I gotta know what's behind the red door. And the guy from Finland's like, yeah, we, we really need to see what this is. So I'm like, all right, you go check. So me and the dude from Finland are standing there on a the sidewalk, you know, doing this thing. We've had gallons of sake. And the other guy goes and he opens the red door and he goes inside it. And then he comes out and he just stands there and he just goes, I, I don't know what I saw. <laughs> and we're like, what do you mean? Is it, is it a, is it a, it's not a brothel, right? It's not a, it's not a whorehouse. He's like, no, but I, I don't know what it is. It's, you have to see for yourself. So we, we go to the red door, we open it and immediately it becomes more interesting because it goes straight down to a basement. And the basement staircase is fire engine red, like on all sides, just glowing red. But oddly stuck to the walls and ceiling of the, of the almost like a wallpaper of the, the red stairway to hell is posters of teenagers. Just, you know, the ones I'm talking about. If you ever watch any like Asian show, like they just, just like just posters of teenagers in different poses and smiles and, you know, a guy leaning on a car or, you know, just was weird middle of nowhere. Look like, you know, t the old magazine Tiger Beat or something like those sort of like things, boys and girls, 
and, you know, clothed, nothing inappropriate, but but laying across the hood of a car doing this thing, or you know, just weird. And we're like just looking down this, this. So we're like, well, uh, we're in, we're too, we've gone past the point of no return at this point. So we go down this this stairwell, and there's another red door. But sitting outside the red door is this guy, a, a bouncer, like sitting like this, on a stool. And he didn't speak English, and we don't speak Japanese, but I, I was now convinced at this point that the mysteries of the universe were going to be solved on the other side of whatever this door was. I mean, there's nothing worse than the professional monkey with a whole lot of alcohol in him and some sort of determination, because I can fly at that point, you know. And so I start trying to communicate with the bouncer, and I like, no, no. So the guy from, from Amsterdam hadn't gotten this far. All he did was look down the stairwell and go, I don't know what that is, and came back to get us. So we sat there, and I talked to this guy for a while, and I and we I communicated, can we see what's on the other side of the door without paying? There was obviously some sort of cover charge. And he finally, he thought it, thought we were funny. And so he was like, uh, yeah, you can go. You can go. He let us, let, us, let us know what that was. That he, he got that much understood that he was going to let us pass the door. So we open the door and we walk into the strangest thing I've, I've ever seen. And I've seen some strange stuff in some far off places. And it wasn't strange because it was inappropriate or, or, or there was varying amounts of clothing or anything like that. No, 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 no. There was none of that. It was strange because there was nothing at all inappropriate going on. This red door up on the street went to a stairwell that was also fire engine red, surrounded with, 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 with centerfolds of teenagers sitting on cars and whatnot, to the bottom that had a doorman protecting a door. And when we opened that door and walked in, there was a room with like cafeteria, cafeteria, cafeteria style of like folding tables, you know what I mean? About three wide, about eight deep, with kids. I say kids, early 20s, late teens, sitting at the tables, smoking cigarettes, all of them drinking Pepsi Cola, not Diet Pepsi, not Pepsi. Every one of them had a Pepsi, and they were watching projected music videos on the wall. The music wasn't loud. It was just sort of, you know, you could talk over it, but none of them were talking. It was the weirdest, like, out of a strange art film kind of thing. I'm standing there just going, N now is when someone comes out and kills us with a machete, right? Because the three of us are standing there looking at these rows of tables of kids, like 21-year-old kids, smoking cigarettes, drinking Pepsi, and watching music videos quietly projected on one wall. Weirdest thing I've ever seen in my life. And then we just turned around and walked out, went back up to the main, and then went down bar to bar and kept drinking. Got thrown out of one bar because we kept answering the telephone, but that's a whole other So the camera just turned off. <laughs> it got tired. Um, so yeah, so, so moral of the story is, yes, they do have those machines that sell undergarments and all that stuff, but they also have weird little parlors I guess you want to call it, where teenagers can sit and watch music videos while smoking cigarettes and drinking Pepsi. It was so weird because it wasn't weird. Now, when we left, um, the dudes I was with, both of them said, you know the second that we get, that there was a massive orgy and then we opened the door and they stopped and then, you know, smoked their cigarettes and drank, and then the second we left and closed the door, the, the orgy, you know, reconvened. <laughs> So he's like, I'm sure of it. I am absolutely sure that that little red room is not just for watching music videos quietly, um, only for Pepsi and only for smoking. But anyway, so yeah, the night went on with um, reckless abandon. Another one of my favorite phrases, but there was uh, lots of drinking at many different places. And yeah, we got thrown out of the last place because we were answering their phone. We were sitting at the bar and the phone ring and one of us would answer, Domino's Pizza, you know, whatever. And finally, the, the bartender, gets, he got mad. Like, he didn't think it was funny. He, you know, started throwing bar towels at us and ice and stuff. And we we're like, that's time to go. You know, we walked out and found this great little stall and ate noodles to sober up. One of the guys got, almost got into an altercation with a kid who walked by, looked like he was 
practice. He was uh, he was about to try out to be join Motley Crue, giant fin and everything else. But it was just a weird night. Uh, and then we poured ourselves into a cab with the help of a Japanese police officer and survived to tell another tale. So I just wanted to share that one with you because it's fun. Uh, I have some others. I'll do these like stories from the vault every once in a while because I've been to some weird places and seen some weird things and I'm sure you guys have too. So, you know, like, comment, subscribe and all that fabulous stuff. But down below, some of you out there have been on some weird trips. I want to hear about them. I really do. Um, just know that if you share a crazy story with me, I might retell it because I, I love sharing that stuff with you guys. So take care of each other out there. We'll talk soon. And uh, oh, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier or not. This Friday, March 26th, 8 o'clock. We're doing another live stream, so come on and drink a gallon of whiskey with us and let's make some bad choices together as a family. <laughs> See ya. Bye.